Well, we've got the makings of a championship battle here at the Sam Houston Coliseum, and things have busted loose. Well, things are busting loose all over this place, so now let's turn it over to Kemper Kaiser. This is your main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Two out of three falls with a 60-minute time limit for the International Junior Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, to my left in the blue corner, Weighing 215 pounds from Juarez, Mexico, the challengers, Chavo Guerrero. And the champion from Houston, Texas, weighing 223 pounds the International Junior Heavyweight Champion, gorgeous Gino Hernandez. And the referee for this match, former heavyweight champion of the world, Luther. Two out of three falls, 60 minute time limit. This is a return match of a battle that took place here in the Sam Houston Coliseum recently that was hotly contested and hotly disputed when it was over. Gino Hernandez was accused of cheating in gaining a victory over Chavo Guerrero for the International Junior Heavyweight title belt. And it was imperative for a return match to be signed. Fans demanded it, and this is the return match. But Gino Hernandez steps into this ring tonight as the international junior heavyweight champion. Chavo Guerrero, who won the belt in Japan, is determined, but then Gino is tough. He literally had to fight his way into the ring here tonight. He'll have to fight his way to get out of the ring because Chavo Guerrero is gonna be all over him for all of this match. This is the first fall a two out of three fall battle. Chavo forcing the issue and moving Gino into the corner and Gino felt the crowding. You saw him push at the break just after Chavo relaxed and he gained room to move out of it. Solid grasp on the neck, trying to pull the head down, trying to get in and get the advantage. And Gino got slightly off balance, and Chavo recognized the fact and whipped him down to the deck. And this crowd is on edge as they scream for Chavo to take charge. Gino has proven his toughness repeatedly to these fans and to his opponents. And Chavo Guerrero is easily one of the brightest young stars of the game. Here he goes. He is going around for a uh, flying head scissor, but he was blocked by Gino. But he turned that right into another advantage and took him down to the canvas. Gino now looking over Chavo with a little bit more respect and not dashing in there to come into that referee's hole because he knows that there are some uh, pointers waiting for him. Gino with his back up against the turnbuckle and the referee 
is calling on them to break, and somebody's going to get broken right in that corner, and Gino is catching it for sure. Hard, high toss, and a well-placed drop kick as Gino gets, gets kicked and hits the deck and rolls out of the ring in one motion. That's an instinct that comes with the ability to avoid punishment, especially after you've taken punishment. Chavo comes from a wrestling family. His father before him was light heavyweight champion of the world. And he is a chip off the old block for sure. Gory Guerrero, just more than a generation ago, was a great wrestler. And now Chavo carries on that tradition, and so do a couple of his brothers. Slam with that elbow and a hard one. And Gino that time set him up for it. He's on top. There's one. There's two. And six times world champion Luthez got the count in there that time, but not the three count. And that's the one that wins the matches. Front headlock. He jerks him up hard. And he, Gino wasn't trying that time to lift him for a back body slam. He was merely trying to jerk his head off. Just put all the pressure on the head. Listen to those fans now as they start calling Chavo, Chavo, Chavo. A concerted uproar here as Chavo moves in with a waist lock that he tries to turn into a bear hug. He fails because there's too much pressure on his head, but a back breaker works. And now he has managed to get out of the, of the grip. Front headlock, and Gino recovers to snatch him rapidly. The old maxim of being able to follow up a good hold by applying it again and capitalizing on the punishment that you, you've turned in is still working. Lutez checking, looking to see if it's a strangle. Chavo trying to get into a position better to brace himself against it. And Gino is hanging on to that head. And the hold again, a waist lock that Chavo tries to turn into a bear hug. And again, it didn't quite work. And again, Gino keeps working on that head. Oh, a nice move by Chavo. Gino's on top. He is in position now to cause a lot of trouble for Chavo Guerrero to bear down on him and make him lose precious energy, not only to get out of holes, but to try to find some way to apply holes. Gino, fireman's lift and slam, and Chavo is a little bit disoriented as he threw him over and fell victim to the same hold again. Chabo getting balanced under there, trying to protect himself from a strangle if it starts to slip. But now it's a top body lock, and Chabo's gonna go for a back body drop. Watch it. There it is. He slammed him down hard. He's got his shoulders close. There's one, and Gino managed to use his advantage in size that time to turn over and get out of it. Chabo trying to fight his way out, trying to kick his way out, trying to maneuver so that he can stay in that battle and turn the tables on Gino Hernandez. Chabo goes for the crotch hold. He's got him in position, but he doesn't exactly know what he's going to do with him. The hold is broken, and that's one advantage, but he's looking for more. Oh, man. Body slam that could resound through this Coliseum. And 
Gino lands like the proverbial ton of brick on top is Chabo, but just for the count of two and that uh, left hand of Lutez hit that canvas hard twice. The fans were just waiting for the third call. He's got both his arms. Surfboard holds, if you will, but he's looking for more. Here he is trying to get into position. He's got both legs wrapped up. He's looking for the Tapatia. Tapatia. Hold introduced to Texas by Rita Romero back in the 50s. And as he pulls up, he's got one of the most difficult holes in, in wrestling to, to escape from and one of the most punishing. And Gino is literally being crucified here as his legs are wrapped around the legs of Chavo Guerrero and his arms are being pulled back and tested as to their ability to stay in their sockets. That head shaking, waving, and Gino's in trouble. He is in very serious trouble that could bring about the end of this fall and even the end of the match because this hold takes its toll and here he gets them up again. Chavo manages to roll back and to employ the leverage that he has done so well. Now he's changing his position. Trouble is with applying a hold like this, you get to the point where you are, um, your hands get tired and your legs get tired from applying it just as well as the man on whom it's being applied suffers. And Gino is tied up for fair. It is a double leg lock, a double arm lock, and don't ask me to give the whole thing a name because I think that uh, Chavo has um, gradually uh, shifted uh, the, the, the grip as he, as he moved. And as he comes out now, he does a fall away arm breaker and tackles Gino with enthusiasm. On bar. And he has reversed that hold well, a twist on it to cause Gino Hernandez a lot of problems. Now as he comes, I'll tell you, Chavo is coming up here tonight with the answers and he is tying Gino Hernandez in knots. Gino had the early going. He did it with sheer strength, front headlocks and, and the ability to hang on to Chavo. But Chavo now is looking for the key that will force Gino to, to capitulate. He, uh, beautiful the way he has tied him up. He's got a figure four uh, scissor on that one, on that left arm. And as he pulls the other one up, he's got Gino wrapped up, but not totally and not completely. Because when you start talking about the, what a wrestling hole can do, you've got to remember always the effect on the man who suffers from it and the man who puts it on. They each lose a little bit of their power as they go along. Gino outside, trying to get the circulation back, trying to get, ease those muscles and get them to work for him again. And shopping move and Chavo Guerrero goes for the monkey flip. Oh, he threw him halfway across the ring. And that's not easy. Chavo going for the crotch hold and he is caught in a uh, cradle hold and, and he was rolled over on his shoulders. He came close to losing it right then and there. Gino got a wild kick out there that set Chavo up. That driving back breaking slam and Gino Hernandez has taken the first fall in this battle here at the Sam Houston Coliseum. Gino Hernandez. 11 minutes and 7 seconds. The winner of the first fall, Gino Hernandez. So, Gino Hernandez defending his international junior heavyweight title. The same belt he won from Chavo Guerrero is one fall ahead, and we've seen some great wrestling in this first fall. We'll be back for the second fall after we have this word from the studio. Noise all over this place. Fans chanting Chavo, Chavo, and Chavo trying to recover from that 
grueling first fall. And the fans 15, getting 15. under the hide of Gino Hernandez. And the more he tells them to shut up, the more they are sounding off. And Gino Hernandez Five, is beset four, by tormentors three, on all two, sides one, of the ring. Second There's ball. the bell, and as the bell rings, he bounces across the ring, dude. On the floor, Chavo walking around, rubbing that neck. He caught that rubber punch. Here comes Gino, and Gino catches him from behind. And, and Chavo catches the ring post from the front. He was slammed into it and slammed into it with violence and vehemence. And now Gino sensing the opportunity to not only retain his international junior heavyweight title, but the possibility of winning it in two straight falls. And Chavo has been, again, slammed into the turnbuckles and the ring post. And here comes Chavo in, into the ring to face the, the rabbit punch. He's in trouble. He is taking an inordinate amount of punishment, and he is um, underneath. Gino trying to set him up, does set him up, and Chavo landed, but he got his feet under there, and he may have saved himself the match by that. I don't know. Sometimes you get your feet under, and you can be hurt even more, but that one looked to me like it may have saved him the force of the slam. And Gino, there's one, there's two, and this match is about over now as Gino is pound. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Gino was pounding, but... Chavo Guerrero is sharpshooting, and he is finding the spots. He is finding the opportunity to cause Gino Hernandez trouble. And Luthez, who has been grabbed by men in the ring before, just handled Gino well, and he hit him with his nether end first. He's going now for a back body drop. He is bridged up underneath him. He's got a fall. Chavo Guerrero comes up with the fall on Gino Hernandez, the equalizing fall. And two and minutes, I'm... 16 seconds, the winner of the second fall, Chavo Guerrero. And I'm the guy that was just saying the match was about over because Chavo here. Guerrero was going to lose in two straight falls. I won't make that mistake again. Chavo came through with a well of reserve. Chavo came through with the answer when he started peppering Gino Hernandez with, with wallops and making them count. He got his opening, the back body drop did it, he bridged under him and Gino couldn't get, uh, get away. And the falls are even and that means that when we come back, we will have the third and deciding fall to decide who is the international junior heavyweight champion. Listen to the noise. That's saying Chavo, Chavo. Gino has not yet risen to his feet. The fans here are trying to inspire Chavo to move seconds. in and do something about it. A tremendous noise rises here from the crowd at the Sam Houston Coliseum. This is an important battle, not only to Gino Hernandez and Chavo Guerrero. Falls are even. This is an important battle to the fans. Seconds. They are solidly behind Chavo, but I want to tell you, Gino Ten Hernandez seconds. has managed to gain fans that he Five, didn't have a month ago. Four, three, Countdown. Two, one, third There's ball. the bell, and now we're set for the decision. The, the falls are even. Referee Luthez says that he will give the match to Chavo Guerrero if Gino keeps asking for time. There is no time out in wrestling. And there is, in this opportunity here, a chance for Chavo Guerrero to blast Gino Hernandez. Cartwheel slam, and he got him down. There's one, but you got to hold him down. Chavo goes for the crotch hold again, the slam. And he does that somersault bounce on him to try to drive some of the 
and pep out of him. And now he's trying to set him up. Oh, he caught him with a beautiful drop kick. But you better make sure that when you throw one, you hit. Because you're in trouble if you don't. And Gino knows an opportunity. There's two, two and a half. Gino and both of these men are veteran enough to recognize that opportunity and try to capitalize on it. And as Gino comes over for that handful of hair, he's using the ring post, not the ring post, but the turnbuckle. Even though it's padded, it's hard. He's using that as his ally. And this could do it. There's one, there's two, and Chavo just barely made it that time. And as he gets rammed into that turnbuckle again, he, his ability to take it is surely going to be tested. Back body drop, and Gino Hernandez goes for the dive off the top rope to splash all of the fight out of Chavo Guerrero, and he may have done it. There's one, there's two, there's a foot over the rope. Chavo reached out there longingly with that leg of his and found that bottom rope. Here's the way Gino won the first fall. It didn't work for him. Now Chavo Guerrero does it to him, slams him down, and Chavo reaches around, and Chavo grabbed him by the trunks. Oh, if that isn't retribution. Chavo grabbed him by the trunks. Look at this uproar. Look at this tremendous uproar of this crowd here at the Sam Houston Coliseum. Listen to this huge, huge noise. And Ch Chavo Guerrero is taking a whomping from Gino Hernandez with the... Gino Hernandez may be waving the belt, but Gino Hernandez has not won the belt. Chavo Guerrero has regained his international junior heavyweight title, and the Gino may carry that belt out of this ring, but he is not, he is not the winner of this match, and he is not the winner of the... And there is Luthez. Luthez, who has won that belt, won a belt, world title belt, and here is Tiger Conway Jr. snatching it away from him and giving it to Chavo Guerrero. A tremendous, uproarious wind up, and Luthez just ducked out of the way of a swing by Gino Hernandez, but Gino can't be cool enough to, to take on Luthez, too, I can tell you that. What a tremendous battle. But the winner, even though he is lying down on the uh, on the mat, bleeding badly from the uh, from the blow with the with the belt, is he's the winner, and he is once again the international junior heavyweight champion. Scott Casey and Tiger Conway Jr. have righted what could have been a, a wrong, and they are going to make sure that Chavo Guerrero does not go out of this ring and notice. Listen to this so far, the enthusiasm, the tremendous driving noise from this crowd as they scream in favor of Chavo Guerrero. Bloody but champion, and that's what counts. Chavo Guerrero is the winner Just of this to make match, it official, and, and the winner for the sure. Two minutes, 18 seconds, the winner of the third fall, and new international junior heavyweight champion, Chavo Guerrero. That's the way it goes, and we'll be back here in a moment after we have this word from the studio.